Running a YouTube channel takes a lot of time. It's a lot of time recording video, editing audio, editing video, rendering video, all the research that goes on involved, you know, preparation to make the videos. And then of course, after the video has been uploaded, interacting with the community, which I love. I love interacting with the viewers of this channel. You guys, you know, I get, I've gotten somewhere around 60,000, I think, comments on my videos in the past year. So we have a really good community around the DistroTube channel. And I, I love answering your questions and responding to your comments, but I get a lot of the same noob questions and comments over and over and over again. Part of that is because the channel's growing very fast. You know, when you get thousands of new subscribers every month, that's thousands of noobs on your channel every month asking the same questions and comments over and over and over again. So I'm gonna take 10 of those noob questions and comments and I'm gonna answer them today on camera. So let's get started. So noob questions and comments. So I get a lot of questions and comments on YouTube and Mastodon, especially YouTube and Mastodon, but also occasionally on Reddit. Uh, occasionally through email and again I do love interacting with you guys but I am really limited on time uh, because I work a ton of hours at real jobs and then I put a lot of hours into YouTube I don't have that much time to, to interact as much with you guys as I would like to so when I come across a, a question or comment that I don't deem worthy to respond I just move on pretty quickly it, uh, don't take it personally, it's just I'm limited on time. So here's my response to some common questions and comments that I get. What's the best Linux distro? Uh, I almost never respond to that. It's because it's a ridiculous question, right? Uh, what's the best Linux distro? I don't know. What's the best video game, right? <laughs> what's the best car? Can somebody answer me that? Uh, well, you're going to say, well, that depends. Well, guess what? What's the best Linux distro uh, to answer that question? It depends, right? If you want this question answered, you're going to have to ask and provide us with more info. What are you trying to do with Linux? What hardware are you trying to run Linux on? What is your experience level with Linux? Uh, you know, what, what is the purpose or you're trying to... Uh, are you trying to run a server, a media server, an email server, a web server? Are you, it's a desktop. Is it going to be like a gaming desktop? Or are you putting it on a laptop? Exactly what are we doing here? Just asking what's the best Linux distro is, quite frankly, a ridiculous question. And I probably won't even bother responding to it. Can you help me with my XYZ Ubuntu install? <laughs> Whatever version of Ubuntu. That could be any Linux distro. But anyway, you get the point. Uh, yes, I probably could help you with your install, but no, I probably will not help you with your install. Again, I'm limited on time, and, you know, I've got, you know, 20K subs, and, you know, I get hundreds of thousands of views a month. You can imagine how many people respond to some of my uh, Linux distro reviews, and I can't get such and such installed. Can you help me? And that's the only information I get. Uh, no, I'm not even going to respond to the question. I don't even want to get sucked into that because I'm not a Linux support channel. If I were trying to support you guys and, you know, technical support, it would seriously, it would suck up all of my time. I would never make another YouTube video ever again. Matter of fact, it would suck up a lot of my personal time. It would suck up a lot of my time at my real life job if I was trying to be a Linux support channel. I can't do that. There are actual Linux support channels out there, official ones. Go to those, right? Uh, me. Me just trying to help one person with one support request, depending on what it is, seriously could take up an entire afternoon, right? And now imagine I have dozens or hundreds of people asking me support questions. No, you have to go to the proper support channels. So with your Linux installs, every Linux ins uh, distro has proper support channels. They have a web form you can go to probably. They have an IRC chat channel that you can probably go to and get support. And there are people waiting there. Their only job is to help you get that thing installed. You know, that's what, why they're there. That's not why I'm here. So if you ask me to help you with your Linux installs, you know, I, I'm probably just not going to respond. How do I learn to use XYZ? <laughs> so I get this question asked all the time. And it's usually, you know, just broad. Hey, how do I learn to use 
Xmonad? How do I learn to use Python? How do I learn to use Emacs? You know, well, first, uh, sometimes you guys are asking me about things I don't even know how to use. Second, uh, learn how to use Google, right? Uh, you're asking me to go to Google to research this stuff for you. No, that is not the way it works here in Linux. First, you need to learn how to Google or DuckDuckGo if you prefer that. Once you have mastered how to Google, how to search for something on Google, in the search results, look for official documentation for the project you're asking about. So if you're asking me about Emacs, I promise you Emacs has an official website with official documentation. Go read it. Or if you're asking me about Vim or, you know, Java or whatever it is you're asking me about, they're going to have really good official documentation somewhere. Go find it. Why are you asking me to find it and then give you that information? Uh, let's cut out the middleman, which is me, and you go get that information yourself. And once you have that uh, official documentation, good luck. You know, just start reading it. Can I get your config for XYZ? Absolutely. All of my configs are hosted over on GitLab. I have all my dot files hosted over on GitLab at uh, gitlab.com slash DWT1. You'll find my, all my open box configs, Qtile configs. Those get asked about all the time. It's my open box and Qtile configs. They're over there. Uh, I've also started uploading my i3 configs since I've been playing with i3. Polybar's over there, Tent2, you know, for those of you needing the Tent2 panel for something like open box. All, all my stuff's there. X resources, bash RC. You'll find all my, my dot files over on that GitLab page. And that is my fault that I don't advertise that GitLab page more. It's, uh, it's on my YouTube channel's about page, but that's the only place that links my GitLab page. I don't have it in like the show descriptions for my videos. I really should. I should just post it on every show description or maybe put it in the header of the channel somewhere. Um, so that's my fault because I get asked this question way too often. I, I really need to put my GitLab link somewhere more prominent on the channel. i3, isn't that a CPU? Yes, I've gotten this question. I've gotten this question more than once. Yes, i3 is a CPU. It's an Intel processor. i3, or i3WM, is also a tiling window manager that we use on Linux and BSD. Uh, usually we just call it i3, like the processor, for you know, computer novices, people that don't know much about computers, hardware or software, the fact that we throw around i3 for the window manager and i3 for the processor, uh, I, I understand the confusion. But yes, there is an Intel processor called an i3 processor, and i3 is also a tiling window manager. They're not the same i3. Two different, two different things, but the same name. Why do you show command line instructions rather than GUI instructions? Because it's easier to do these things at the command line most of the time. So, take for instance, uh, installing, removing software. I could show you how to install software in Ubuntu's various official flavors in a dozen different ways probably, right? I can show you with the GNOME Software Center, with Discover in KDE or Muon, or, you know, the software centers in Mate and Zubuntu, and I can show you with the Synaptic Package Manager. I can show you with GDB, you know, how to install uh, dev packages, etc., etc. Or, you know what, I could show everybody that runs Ubuntu, regardless of desktop environment, what flavor you run, I could just show you how to do it in the command line. sudo apt install name a program. Boom. Done. That's why we do things with the command line. That's why when you go get Linux support, you go to an IRC support channel for your Linux distro. They're going to give you instructions on how to fix whatever it is you're asking about. They're going to do it all at the command line because they're not going to tell you about graphical programs because that's assuming you have these graphical programs even installed. You probably won't. You know, everybody installs different graphical programs on their system, but every Linux user has the shell. That's why typically we just do things with the command line. It's easier, and quite frankly, most of the time it's faster. I accidentally formatted the wrong drive, or I recursively deleted my root folder or my home directory. I've gotten these comments more than a few times. Yes, you can recover data from a formatted disk. It's possible. Uh, there are services designed to recover that lost data. You send them the drive, and... It's very, very expensive, this data recovery thing, and you're not guaranteed to get all your data back. 
you're probably not going to go through that trouble because again, it's very expensive and it may not work anyway. So the hard truth in this matter is you done effed up, right? You've, you, you messed up, dog, right? If you formatted your drive or you recursively deleted, you know, your home directory or your root directory, your data's gone. So my question is, do you have a good backup? I already know you don't. How do I know you don't? Because you wouldn't have asked me this question if you had a backup. You would have just reinstalled and used your backups. So I know you don't have a backup. So you know what? You should just take this as lesson learned. Going forward, start taking backups a little more seriously. Next question. Can you make a video about some topic that I've already covered before? Okay, guys. YouTube has a search, search function. Use it. Again, time is precious. I have little time. I don't have as much time to interact with you guys on, you know, viewer questions and comments as, as much as I would like. So when somebody asks me something like, hey, man, can you make a video about open box? And I've made a dozen videos about open box. Uh, why don't you use the search function? If you go to my channel, let me pull up my, my page here. All right. You see the little search symbol here? Use that, right? And then just type any topic. So if you're even wondering if I've made a video about whatever topic, just type it. So open box was my example. So just type open box and hit enter. And you will see I've made a few videos about open box. So yeah, just use the search function. Uh, because when you guys ask me that, you're kind of wasting my time because I had to use the search function. Now I'm going to pick a video to show you. I'm going to link you to that video. No, I'm probably not going to do that. I'm not going to search for these videos and feed you a link because even if it only takes me 30 seconds or 60 seconds to do this, again, it's kind of wasting my time. I'm just going to point you to the, to the search function on YouTube. Please use it. I like your videos, but you really tick me off with that GNOME crap. <laughs> again, YouTube has a search function. Use it. If you actually search for GNOME, in my uh, search channel, uh, you will find that I have made a video about this topic, specifically this topic, the pronunciation of GNOME. Yes, I know GNOME is a word. GNOME with a G is a word. The G is silent. But GNOME is an acronym. It's not a word. The GNOME devs originally wanted GNOME pronounced GNOME because the G in GNOME stands for GNU. So they pronounce GNOME GNOME in deference to the GNU project. So that's why it's always been GNOME. That's why I continue to call it GNOME. But honestly, the GNOME project, they really don't care how you pronounce it. They just want you to use your desktop. So if you want to pronounce it GNOME, go ahead. But uh, don't call me an idiot for pronouncing it GNOME when that's originally what they wanted it to be pronounced. Um, a while ago, you made a video recommending a certain program. And I never made this video about this certain program. I get the, these questions more than I should. So I get questions every now and then about these videos I supposedly made. I didn't make these videos. Now I get it. A lot of Linux YouTubers look alike, right? We're all kind of middle-aged white guys. We're nerds, right? But it's, it's a little insulting. I mean, do all of us bald-headed white guys look alike? And no, I'm not Luke Smith. Before I go, this show was made possible by Ansem, Carlos, Chris, Dylan, Leo, Rob, and Tony. show was also brought to you by all those fine ladies and gentlemen. They are the supporters of the channel, all those names on the screen. Without them, none of this would be possible. If you'd like to support my work, please consider doing so. Support me at DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.